Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. Today, we will be talking about our top five favorite movie remakes. And surprisingly, uh, the Psycho remake did make the list. Maybe that's not surprising. Really, Gus Van Sant, a shot-for-shot shot remake? Do we need a shot-for-shot shot remake? Really? Hey everybody, I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. And I'm John Hammertime Holshue. And we will be talking about the top five movie remakes. Now, movie remakes, there are a lot of bad ones. A lot. Like so many. Most of them, in fact, probably like 90%. And the 10%, most of them almost made the top five. But without further ado, here is our top five movie remakes of all time. Number five is going to be True Grit. Now, mm. this is in 2010. The original was 1969. It was Henry Hathaway, who was famous for doing How the West Was Won. Phenomenal film. Yeah. And, of course, that had John Wayne in it. We all remember the original. Just a great film. How great can you film. make such a great film? Jeff Bridges. That's how. And the Coen Brothers. Oh, yes. They brought a, a, a darker, more serious tone, of course. That's the Coen Brothers. I guess that's their specialty. Yes. But it's a, phenom it's a phenomenal film. And, again, Jeff Bridges. What else I got to say? Jeff Bridges. So that's our number five. Number four is 1991's Cape Fear, directed by Martin Scorsese. This, is, of course, is a remake of J. Lee Thompson's 1962 classic, Cape Fear, with Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum. Like, first of all, that's already a classic. Look at the talent behind it. Look at what is going on. That's a great film and a really scary film of the time. Oh, yeah. Scorsese remakes it. Actually, Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, wanted to make this movie, but decided it was too dark for him, okay? And so he gave it to Scorsese in exchange for Schindler's List. Wow. Basically. But this is a brilliant movie. Robert De Niro is fantastic. He was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. He went down to 4% body fat to make himself look more imposing than Nick Nolte. Jessica Lange and what's her name? Uh, Juliette Lewis. Oh my goodness. Juliette Lewis. They did a phenomenal roles in this movie is very very scary and one of my favorite things about the remake uses a lot of the music from the original watch the original watch the remake it's a great film number three is going to be the fly 1986 cronenberg a uh, great director he definitely has a dark uh style to him talk about dark i get the dark ones cohen brothers <laughs> yeah you do uh, he cronenberg. likes the dark movies yeah it's uh based on the uh 1958 film uh with vincent price classic film one of my favorite horror films, and I just love the original Fly, and I figure, how can you top that, right? Well, they didn't try to just recreate it. They went a different direction. It's a lot, uh, instead of just sh showing you bits and pieces of the Fly or building on the story, they actually, you see the Fly develop and him evolve. Oh, yeah. And it's very disturbing. It was the first film I saw, made me want to throw up. So that means a lot to me. That's a testament <laughs> to how, how great the special effects are. So... That's number three. Number two is 2001's Ocean's Eleven, directed by Steven Soderbergh, starring George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and many, many, many other people. Great cast. It's a great cast. Of course, it's a remake of the 1960 uh, Lewis Milestone classic, also directed All Quiet on the Western Front. Like, that's a really legit yeah, movie. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a director. But if I remember correctly, and we looked this up on the internet, but All Quiet on the Western Front is like an old, old movie. And this is 1960, so this was... An, an elderly gentleman, I believe. Anyway. An established director. An established director. An established but not quite so elderly director, Steven Soderbergh, has given us such classics as Out of Sight, Ocean's Eleven, like we're talking about, Sex Ties and... Sex Ties. <laughs> Sex Ties and Videotape is a brand new film coming out. Ah. Just wait to see it. Anyway, Sex Lies and Videotape. Soderbergh is a name. He made Ocean's Eleven. It's really, really fun. It's got a great cast. Some fun facts. Johnny Depp was originally cast to play the Matt Damon role. But it had to turn it down. Also, Mike Myers and Mark Wahlberg and a bunch of other people were supposed to be in the film. But because it had such a a, 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 bu a big ensemble cast full, filled with star power, a lot of conflicting schedules. Oh, yeah. A lot of people had to drop out. But it's a great film. I I haven't seen the original, to be honest with you, still from our Ice Movies podcast. Haven't seen it, but I love the remake. It's great. George Clooney's character, Danny Ocean, so endearing to me. And, of course, I have a giant man crush on George Clooney, so that doesn't hurt. Ocean's Eleven's a great film. Of course, you've already seen it. And if you are one of the few out there who haven't, please do. And number one would be, and this was a hard one to decide on, The Thing. Oh, don't lie. It wasn't a hard one at Not all. Really. <laughs> the Thing is a fantastic movie from 1982. And, you know, it actually kind of got buried. It wasn't very successful when it first came out. And it was the same year that Blade Runner came out. But both of those films were buried by Steven Spielberg's E.T. Everybody wanted the feel-good alien movie of the year, not the 
terrible, they're coming to kill you, Alien Movie Year. But it's a great movie with a fantastic cast. John Carpenter loves the original. Howard Hawks 1951 production, The Thing from Another World. He loves the original so much, it's actually in the movie Halloween. It's the movie that Tommy is watching. So obviously John Carpenter wanted to make this film. He's a huge Howard Hawks fan. I'm actually surprised that aside from vampires, he hasn't made another Western film. It's uh, Kurt Russell uh, is the main character. He does oh, a fantastic. phenomenal job. Oh, yeah. And it also has that, that, since you're in the Arctic and pretty much by yourself, it's got this just very claustrophobic oh, feeling. Yeah. And uh, it's beautifully shot. And special effects are phenomenal because they actually do show you the monster and the monster tr uh, transformations and it's just, it's graphic but it's done so well especially for 1982. Yeah and everybody in the cast is actually fantastic and it's it's like you said it's very claustrophobic and it's also it, it, it touches on paranoia. Oh yeah. You know, I love the scene when they're trying to find out who is the thing. Is that when they're testing the and blood? And they're burning the blood? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. And the one, you know, that, that one dude, the roller skating dude, you know, in the movie, he's chained up next to the actual guy who is the thing. And he's freaking out when he goes, like, let me out of here, let me out of here. I don't know. I love that movie. It's so good. So scary. It's a staple at Horror Fest every single year. Is it not? It is. And it's a classic. It really is a classic. Absolutely. We thank you for watching. Please comment below. What are the best movie remakes? What did we miss? We know we missed Dawn of the Dead. Honorable mention. Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead is a very good remake, but to us it's number six, not number five, because that was True Grit. Yeah, if we do a top six, we'll add it back in. Yeah, but I don't know. Top six doesn't sound near. No, so. it sounds kind of weird. Anyway, thank you for liking and sharing this video that you're watching right now. Be sure to subscribe and share it with all your friends because we have a lot of fun doing these and we want to keep doing them for you. Right, John? Yeah, we appreciate it. If you have a suggestion for a top five, let us know. Let us know in the comments below. So let's get the conversation going down below. And we'll catch you on the next top five.